Citizens of EDTP 580. This is a quick review uh, and uh, a location service so you can see where everything that you need to know is located to complete the assignment. We do not have class on Monday. You will be working on locating your pictures, developing your PowerPoint, completing your word cloud. In our module, at the top level of the module, I call this the front page, are three videos that will help you with every step of the way. They're very complete. Now they look a little small here on our screen and if you have a hard time seeing it just click where it says YouTube. It will take you to the original source and you can blow it up in full screen if necessary to see everything that's going on. This particular screencast is not going to go into the specifics of each one of the elements. That's going to be your job. Your job will be that. Well, I've had questions about where do the resources live, and I'm going to show you that right now. So one of the resources that you'll need to find, of course, is the information about your digital citizenship element. That is located here. It is also chapter three of our book. So I'm going to click on digital citizenship. This was the PowerPoint I showed you on Friday. Here are the digital citizenship sites. And once this page loads, this is the essentially the nine elements of the digital citizenship, all located right here. Uh, that first page, I believe, is blacked out because of copyright issues. But here we go, the nine elements of digital citizenship. So if you don't have the book, here's where your information is located. In one of the videos, uh, I talk about how to make the word cloud by essentially copying the definition that's here. And as you can see, it's not hard to do. It's just pretty much just copy all of this. You can copy as much as you want. Uh, the word cloud knows what to do and paste that into the word cloud and then turn it into your word cloud. That uh, demonstration is in video three. I'm, yes, it's video three. The last thing I wanted to show you, <clears throat> because some of you, according to the doodle, uh, may be um, using a voice thread in a shared mode. So I just kind of wanted to go over that to give you a sense of how you set that up. So the first thing I need to do is to go find your partners. Well, the first thing you need to do is decide who is going to own the voice thread first. Now, once you do that, both of you will have the same abilities in terms of viewing and editing and commenting, but someone has to start the ball rolling. So I'm going to go ahead and pick on Ian here because he's the first one on my list. And I'm just going to copy Ian's email address, essentially his login. I'm going to go to my voice thread that I've started thing to add someone to your voice thread that becomes a co-creator. You're going to click on share. You're going to click on contacts. You're going to click on the plus sign because you're adding one. You're going to put in the email address of your co-presenter. Um, and when I put in Ian's, I notice that his comes in kind of funky. So I make sure I uh, use my backspace key to get it all the way over to the left. It also wants a name. 
I can just put in the first name. I don't have to put in the whole name. And then I'm going to save it. And once I do that, there he is. Now I will select him and I want to allow him to view, to comment, and to edit. And then I will click share. Now when Ian logs in, what he will see on his VoiceThread screen is this VoiceThread called test and he can add pictures to it, he can delete, he can comment, he can do all the things that the originator of the voice thread, me, uh, could do to the voice thread. So if you're working with a partner, um, you gotta have your text phone text ready on your phone so you can talk back and forth uh, or of course just call them up talk to them. Alright, that's everything we need to know for Monday. Monday would be the time for you to get your resources together as described in the uh, second video. Um, and then on Wednesday, we will, I was going to give you Wednesday to get it all put together and then I will show you uh, how it goes into our discussion forum. If you get ahead of the curve and you want to go ahead and do that, it is all covered in video three. Okay. Um, I will be there Monday, of course, with about 60 kids um, and teaching coding. If you want to drop by and uh, experience uh, what it's like to do something like that with a group of kids, or if you just want to see, we're also going to be having a maker space going on there. Um, um, Tuesday and Wednesday, we will be, and Thursday, excuse me, we'll be going over to First Build. Um, and um, although we won't our class won't be interrupted. But if you want to see what that's all about, you could come down on Wednesday before class, and I'll be glad to meet up with you and walk you over to First Build, and you can see what's going on. And that's it. I hope you're enjoying this little break. Um, I hope this isn't too difficult a task. I think we've got plenty of video coverage. If you do run into problems, do not hesitate to email me, or more importantly, it's a lot easier if you just text me. You'll get an answer right away. Graham texted me last night around 11.30 and he got an answer right away. Okay, see you on Wednesday.